Hello, my friends. You're certain to be impressed with our guest today and her credentials, her accomplishments, and her political fortitude. Her grand calls her Nana Jana, but her students call her a marvel of cannabis energy. She preaches the flow of critical thinking in cannabis and wears so many hats, you're about to be amazed. Buckle up. Jana Champagne is about to rock your mind and make you check your ethics right after the intro. Welcome to Season 5 of the Cannabivarum Podcast, the Cannabis Truth Podcast. I speak the language of cannabis freely and uncensored while educating my audience on safe use of this live plant therapy. You should know what's in your cannabis, what's good and what's not. It does not come with an FDA stamp of approval yet. Using cannabis mindfully as medication is a different concept than Western healthcare philosophy, specifically of the past 100 years. There's a lot to learn and reconsider. The information you'll find here comes straight from scientists and clinicians doing the work and reporting their findings in real time through various live online outlets. The scientific truth of cannabis is finally getting out and is wide open for all to see at the respected medical sites like PubMed.gov and JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association. And I'm right there in the thick of it with all those titans of medicine has a fly on the wall, because I'm not a doctor, nor did I go to med school, but I did take dozens of private cannabis courses and still engage in continuing education offered by cannabis expert scientists over the past few years, and slowly began to see and understand the bigger picture. Now I talk to people all day long about cannabis and hopefully inspire them to research the facts as we know them today. Cannabis is an amazing alternative in health remedies. It can reportedly alleviate typical disease problems and troubling side effects, even those caused by synthetic prescriptions. This is Honey Smith Walls, a 21st century cannabis shaman, not a doctor, not a scientist, raised by nuns and wolves in the verdant cattle pastures of the Oklahoma oil fields. I'm here to amplify the truth of this great big story of cannabis in historical, political, scientific, and even spiritual terms so you can make educated decisions about the medicine you choose to ingest. Hey, it sounds like I have Jana. Hi, honey. How are you? Oh, you have such a beautiful voice. Oh, thank you. I bet you're told that all the time. (laughs) Yeah, me too. But wow, it really is uh, striking to hear, you know, you've got a lot of resonance and bass and it's glorious. Women usually are so high in their voice. And I guess you can tell I'm slightly musical. (laughs) Yes, I am too. I'm actually, <laughs> we have that in common. I'm actually a, a classically trained pianist. So, Oh, I didn't realize you were a pianist though. Yes, oh, yes. glory. Fact, um, part of my illness journey, the impact of such was that my hand stopped working <gasps> and I lost my ability to play piano for several years. Good so, Lord. I'm, I'm happy to say that has returned. Uh, my ability I'm, to play return to me. <laughs> it's this amazing story. How I, I, I can't wait to hear. I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> stop me. I can turn into a chatty Kathy with all my questions. But oh, gosh, no, you're fine. let me just say thank you, honey, for coming and sharing with us today. My audience uh, really needs to hear this kind of story so that they'll have the courage, you know, that they need to to for John Ward uh, in this kind of um, life event. Yeah, well, and and thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be here and and happy to share our experience. So tell us your story, won't you, Jenna? 
please? Sure, of course. And I'll, I'll kind of give the summary version and then we can backtrack to, you know, cover yeah. any details that you're burning to know. <laughs> Basically, um, in 2012, I suffered a complete health collapse and became a cannabis patient who happened to be a nurse. And my outcomes were such that it prompted my deep dive into the research. Mm -hmm. I had initially sought cannabis just as an alternative to pain medications. I knew I didn't want to start opioids for chronic pain. Mm. Being a nurse, I had seen where that led patients and knew I did not want to go there. Mm. So that was my initial expectation was that, hey, cannabis might help with my pain relief. And at the time, I had no clue that cannabis had any kind of medicinal value. I had some recreational experience with cannabis and it actually replaced alcohol for me in my early 20s, which mm. was harm reduction, even though I wasn't thinking of it that way. Right. Because I do happen to come from a very long line of alcoholics. Mm, me too. So it was probably a really good switch. And, and at the time, I just loved that I could smoke instead of drink and not have a hangover the next morning. <laughs> so that's really what had motivated me. Priceless. But then I went on. Yeah, I went on to become a mom and a nurse. And, you know, in nursing school, they say, don't use cannabis. And they drug tested us and demonized it. So mm -hmm. I had stayed away from it, you know, more than a decade mm -hmm. uh, before my illness. And, you know, my husband, thankfully, had a friend that was a cannabis grower. We're here in Oregon, where, thankfully, it's very readily available. And he donated some of his trim to my husband, and he made me some good old RSO. Oh, wow. And, uh, and with the RSO, not only was my pain relieved, I was sleeping better, I was more functional just for that. But in about six months, my lupus labs zero converted. So I went from objectively positive for lupus to objectively negative for lupus oh and my. was able to to wean off of all of the autoimmune medications which at the time was prednisone plaquenil and mexotrexate mexotrexate which have horrible side effects all of them so cannabis once again provided a harm reduction um, effect for me what i found when i dove into the research after seeing my lupus labs go from positive to negative which as a nurse i knew that was an expected outcome of mainstream approaches for autoimmune. And mm -hmm. so it really surprised me. And I thought, how could this plant be doing something that no pharmaceutical could boast? You know, and, and I'm feeling good, you know, no horrible side effects either. You know, it actually alleviated my horrible side effects of the pharma. And what I found was research supporting that intensively dosed THC has an immunosuppressant effect specific to the T cells in our immune system. And the T cells are what drive the autoimmune attack. It's a self attack. So it's like our immune system gets confused and starts to attack our own cells of our body. That's what autoimmune is. And so yeah. it explained how THC can actually dampen that drive by the T cells, which is what I believe led to my autoimmune seroconversion is the fancy word for positive to negative. So, wow. yeah, very interesting. Wow. So, yeah. And, and even bigger was the realization through this autodidactic journey that in nursing school, my anatomy and physiology classes omitted a major system in the human body called the endocannabinoid ECF. system. I was not yes. taught about this, even though we discovered it in the 90s. And, Is it uh, you know, <sighs> to realize they're, they're not teaching that. It really is. It, it really woke me up to just how corrupt our medical system is. Haven't they been teaching? Broken. I got to ask you this. Haven't they been teaching about other new discoveries since the 90s? Oh, absolutely. If you go to medical school, they're all about the latest and greatest discoveries. But many of those discoveries are pharma driven, mm -hmm. whereas cannabis is actually a competitor to pharmaceuticals. Right. And Pharma is, I mean, they really like stripping away plant compounds from the 500 found in the flower down to an isolate one so they can patent it, which then facilitates their ability to monopolize on all of the profits of the sales from that product, which is not possible with the whole plant. You can't, right. you can't patent the whole plant. So it really starts to elucidate the reasons why cannabis is so heavily restricted in the first place in this country is because Pharma profits drive our politics, feed our politics, and create this bias against anything that would compete with their profits. You just can't get away from the politics in cannabis. 
-hmm. because it 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 has it still restricts us and yet we're learning the the facts about cannabis and it just don't jive with what we've been told it doesn't at all and, and i work with jim bartell who wrote ryan's law california oh i was actually one of the nurses that served ryan back in the day oh. when he had pancreatic cancer and jim bartell is an ex-politician basically he's he worked in politics his entire career and mm. now he's retired and just kind of doing volunteer and in you know trying to really spread mm. the protection of ryan's law throughout the country he has initiatives in a dozen states this year i think and what Ryan's Law does is protect patients' access to cannabis while they're hospitalized in California. And that was recently expanded to all patients age 65 plus, in addition to terminal patients. And his drive to do that was his son, Ryan, and how he benefited from cannabis therapy in his final days suffering from pancreatic cancer. You know, sometimes there's just no logic to the legislation. And you, you go, I, I do a lot of legislative advocacy and giving testimony at hearings you see a lot of willful ignorance responses by the legislators. And I said, I just don't understand it. And willful I was frustrated one day. ignorance. Willful right. ignorance. Yeah. Like you're they trying put to put their teach. hands up over their ears and yeah. say, don't bother me with the facts. I already know what I yeah. believe. Well, and they know what they're being told yeah. to promote and what they're being told to try to keep subdued. Right. They're yes. following the directives it, of the people paying their campaign contributions, which like in Congress, for example, is about 70 percent pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, there's real corruption there. Serious corruption. And Jim's response to me when I was <laughs> venting to him about my frustration, because I had I had gone to a, um, a Senate hearing in Oregon for Ryan's law to try to pass an initiative in this state, you know, similar co kind of copycatting what they did in California. Uh -huh. And the co-chair of the health care committee where I was testifying at his hearing during our testimony, it was Dr. Rachel Knox, Dr. A.D. Ray oh, and right. myself uh -huh. testifying. He was turned away from the computer screen. Oh, so we could see the side of his face. And we could see the phone six inches in front of his face where he was scrolling. He like, was scrolling on his cell phone. Deliberately ignoring our message on camera. I mean, he could have at least turned his camera off, right? I mean, he was sending a very oh, clear message. Oh, wow. He had, he had zero interest in anything we had to say. So that, to me, is like the picture of willful ignorance. And I have yeah, the recording it of that. Is. I have that recording, so... It's there. It's recorded. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's just gobsmacking, um, isn't it? It really is. And the way that Jim explained it to me is just to say, Jana, when there's no logic in politics, follow the money and you'll find your answers. He was so right. Yeah. Well, we're trying to correct that. Of course, it takes a lot of people to vote the right people in. Yes. And, and, you know, we each have our ideas about what right means. So it's even more difficult than it seems. It really but, is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, cannabis, w w cannabis is coming in like a freight train around the world. I really think that because this is the people's initiative, that the politics are going to have to change around it. Because eventually the old politicians are going to die out and the new younger crowd that realizes the values, you know, of the plant medicinally um, and not just medicinally. I'm, they're making airplanes with it now, for crying out loud. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's probably going to other planets already. We could paint a really beautiful picture of our world that includes the plant but until we get the politicians in there that will allow it, you know, it's just that same old story of corruption. Yeah, it, it really requires targeting the root of the problem, which is corruption. And I'm especially encouraged by one of our president candidates. And I don't talk politics a lot because I actually hate politics. If you had to put me in a box, I would do it kicking and screaming, and I would be labeled as a very progressive libertarian. I am not blue. Mm. I am not red. I see the division being promoted by both sides 
um, and and see it as like they're two wings of the same bird. They're all they're both promoting division. And I believe to solve our inherent problems in this country, we need to unite as citizens, despite our differences. We need to be actively seeking common ground, trying to really understand perspectives that differ from our own and mm -hmm. realize through that process that we have far more in common as completely opposite citizens than all citizens have with those that are driving this corruption and benefiting from it, which is the elite in the political system, mostly in pharmaceuticals and, and other organizations that are prioritizing profits over the people. So I am a big advocate of, of RFK just because he has 40 years of experience fighting corruption at the federal government level. He knows the players, he knows their weaknesses, he knows the processes. And by the way, he has come out as the number one candidate as far as his plans around cannabis and psilocybin policy. Oh, no so kidding. I encourage everybody to look at his messages and, and just hear the difference in how he speaks. And his well, compassion. thank you for that tip. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, uh, I, I left politics a couple of years ago mm -hmm. uh, because I had to, had to find some peace. Mm -hmm. And yes. all that crap and data coming in constantly, fearful, anxious, junk going on you know mm -hmm. uh it just does not lend itself to peace and i had to find peace I had to yes. find peace yes and so part of my daily practice is to yeah, stop absolutely. watching the you know the bad stuff on tv yeah. stop listening to old lyrics that send us into em emotional you know tragedy yes. and and all that stuff we have to start making better choices for ourselves Mm -hmm. And um, a and regarding what our conditioning has been throughout our lives and, you know, place a check on that. Let's just eyeball that for a minute and see where it could be corrected. Oh, for because, sure. Got to um, kill that yeah. autopilot. <laughs> Man, you really, do. <laughs> you really do. It just gets so many people in trouble. And so, yes. but that's, you know, that's thinking outside your conditioned mind and it's real hard to get even just to that space. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I always encourage people to kind of take a step back from watching mainstream media that is so fear driven. And by the way, pharmaceutical profit driven as well Ooh, um, ain't by that the, the commercial truth. income. So if you're getting your information strictly, especially from you know, one side of media, you're yeah. really not getting the story. You might be getting a little fraction of it. Yeah. But I always encourage people to watch the opposing media, to watch independent media as well, and really formulate your own conclusions. Research these topics that people are bringing up yourself. Yeah. You can say, I found this information. It, don't just pair it what the media are saying. Because and they, that's easy they to do. are biased. They are right, either side, whether it's Fox News or CNN, they are both extraordinarily biased. Yep. And if you want to know who they're biased towards, look at who's buying their commercials. Yeah. I, I've just I've just come from 35 years in Old Fart Land in Florida. That culture down there is so different than this culture up here in Michigan. You mm -hmm. know, where it's sort of survivalist and there's a lot of nationalists, too, and there's a lot of uh, racism up here, but it's different. It's about people from Mexico, it seems, and the Muslims, uh, mm -hmm. all, all that racism about that. I never hear about racism about Canadians. I don't know why. Just don't. <laughs> so, you know, people of color, again, and any other race other than white coming into this country is going to get picked on severely yeah and and you know that has I, in and i understand there's definitely different severities of how our immigrants were treated based on factors that they could not control like the color of their skin but right. realistically that has gone on since the inception of this country that's right to be racism every against, single exactly everybody but, yeah there used to be racism against Irish people. Um, I was just going to say that. You know, my, my Norwegian ancestry were not treated very fondly when they came in. The so, Italians you know, got shit. Italians, everybody. So we all kind of go through these phases, but there are so few of us that were brought here without consent and yeah. forced into slave labor. Right. And so I think that's a whole nother issue. And, and 
just the generational disempowerment that that the African Americans especially have have suffered is is you know it, it, it's encouraging to see so many standing up now and reclaiming that power and saying no this is where it stops. Do you feel this movement? I feel a movement like that. Yeah, definitely. I think, and I think people are more receptive now. I mean, our society has definitely changed to be more accepting of differences in some ways. Um, that's why it's it's such it's so ironic that individually we can have these huge disagreements with mm -hmm. another person, and all of a sudden we're arch enemies. Is how a lot of people respond. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people respond with, if, if you say something I disagree with, you're attacking me. And I don't see it that way. I'm all for open debate and open discourse. And I think freedom of speech is very important. But I also think we need to be protective of those who are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And we need to stand up and make sure that we're advocating when we see something that's wrong. Um, and see, you know, I, I'm also a human rights advocate and and a consultant. So I bring a lot of those human rights into the cannabis world too. And, mm. and uh, you know, one of my perspectives is that access to whole plant cannabis, the ability to grow the plant, the ability to use the flower in any capacity um, without altering the profile too substantially should mm -hmm. be a basic human right. It's should providing be. vital and unique nutrients for human health. And this plant has evolved with us for thousands of years. It's even suggested that if the body is unable to produce cannabinoids, the endocannabinoids that are kind of synonymous with those from the plant, that life would not be possible. And every illness state is now being linked with endocannabinoid deficiency. And when someone is in that deficient state, we can supplement with the cannabinoids from the plant and seamlessly fill in for the impact of that deficiency. That says so much because, people, really does. you know, God, we've got so much to teach. We've got mm -hmm. so much to teach. It's so complex. It's so, you know, the ECS, the endocannabinoid system is a master regulatory system. Like you said in the beginning, so few people know about it because it hasn't been taught. Why? The politics. It was okay. stricken from the schools. And from the pharmacopoeias as well in the early 30s. And, you know, once that happened, once it was stricken from the pharmacopoeias, well, uh, nobody dared talk about it. There was a heavy well, penalty for prescribing it or trying to use it. Uh, and then it was stricken. So they really walloped it from the inside out. Scheduling and, and taxations and all of that. They eradicated it then physically from all the fields. So then none of our animals would be eating can, uh, cannabinoids again. And so, you know, our chickens, our cattle, our sheep, goats, none of it mm -hmm. have... Uh, yep. had the um, cannabinoids in it that they used to have. And so exactly. our whole food chain has been robbed and therefore, hello, ADHD, spasming organ, Parkinson's, more tumors, more cancers, more everything. Absolutely. Because we have this endocannabinoid deficiency. <laughs> uh, do you have uh, Russ Hudson's The Big Book of Terps yet? I do. I've got it sitting right here. Oh, he sent me a, a beta copy before it published. So Shut yeah, up. Nice. You lucky yeah. girl. You lucky well, I, girl. <laughs> I'm a professor and I teach cannabinoid science. So I get a lot of people sent me oh, to be considered course. as texts for my classes so. of course yeah well yeah, i can't so, wait to see yeah. is uh the flag the new book of flaves the book that of was what? supposed to yeah the new book of flavonoids flav like the oh. big book of flaves is the yes. is the next one that he's doing after the, wow. he's done you know version two of uh of the big book of terps and um and i hear it's uh even got some pictures in it from Fat Nugs magazine. Oh, la, la, la. You know, the stuff we know from the inside out. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, and Russo's, he's really involved with uh, True Terpenes now. He has a lot of blends on there. And I, I love that he was kind of the one that trailblazed this theory of clinical endocannabinoid deficiency. And yeah, thank you. That's what I was trying to yeah. say. Mm -hmm. He originally coined it in 2004 and then wrote about it again in 2012, linking it with several chronic illnesses 
And here, you know, a decade later, we're now pretty much linking it with every chronic illness. And how we're doing that right. is, is by understanding that, and this is what a lot of doctors don't understand, yes. why right? part of the reason they're so hesitant to even discuss cannabis or hear about it is because they hear it's good for everything and they write it off as snake oil. They think it's fake. Right. Or psychosomatic response, something like that. Um, mm. And so placebo response. Mm-hmm. And so but they don't know we educate, have a receptors to, 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 to accept it. Exactly. They, they, haven't, they haven't been taught that we have a human endocannabinoid system, that we produce our own cannabinoids, that the most prolific source is human breast milk, which is our perfect food. They don't know any of these things. They, they also don't understand that the endocannabinoid system is our motherboard in our body. And its job mm. is to maintain systemic homeostasis, meaning balance throughout the body. It links with every other system in our body and its job is to keep it in balance. And when you understand that the underlying cause of all disease is imbalances, that explains why cannabis is so good for so many different conditions. I love that you called it the motherboard. It's just, you know, it's so vital to to our survival and yet uh, only discovered in 1992. Hello. Yes. So, um, you know, and that was uh, not even in this country. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Dr. Mishulam, Mishulam discovered it right in Israel. Yep. Was it, uh, going back to Dr. Russo, Dr. Ethan Russo, uh, was it he who had patients up in uh, New England area who were outliving their prognoses and, and uh, confessing that, they were using cannabis and then they died from it because of the aspergillus mold, not the cannabis, of course, but because it was contaminated with mold. I, I, it may not have been Dr. Russo who has that story, but uh, it was the, the mold and contamination that really Mm -hmm. uh, uh, killed the patients. Yeah. And, um, and then that got me, so much more heavily interested in you know what's inside everything. My story relates to that a little bit. I had uh, chronic fatigue mm-hmm. and uh, was using uh, street weed for three years, and it was debilitating, even more so than chronic fatigue. And I didn't understand, and none of the doctors could figure out. La la la. Mm-hmm. Finally, when I realized, my body said, "You're gonna die." you don't do something yeah and that scared the bejesus out of me yeah and um about that time serendipity as it would be there came a commercial on tv about the um learning learn sativa university in orlando florida (laughs) and that got me interested in in cannabis because i realized instantly it had to be something in the weed i was using Mm -hmm. I didn't know what had to be something pesticides was my first thought, you know, that was poisoning me slowly because the more I smoked, the worse I felt. So, and, and knowing so much more now, you know, it wasn't, um, um, sorry, I can't say that syndrome where you have too much THC. Oh, hyperemesis. Yeah, it wasn't hyperemesis. Uh, Cannabis use disorder. It was, yeah, no, it was just slow poisoning from um, from uh, using contaminated weed. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, the second I stopped using contaminated weed, and as it would have it, uh, Florida at that time went legal uh, medicinally. As soon as I started using medical marijuana, you know, that was clean. All those symptoms stopped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Having clean weed is extremely important. And Friends, I'm just stunned to realize how difficult it is to find trustworthy, high-quality CBD products that are full-spectrum and whole plant with all the natural compounds extracted from the plant for you to consume as nature provided. They don't carry it in the uh, shops where I, I go to find my cannabis products. 
They push their own isolate brands, and that's just not good enough for me. It doesn't have all the compounds. I've heard a lot of complaints about how to find consistent, over-the-counter CBD products, and I have a solution. I became an affiliate partner with Healer Hemp Products. Dr. Dustin Sulak, a doctor of osteopath, who created this line is truly one of the great leaders in cannabis therapy, giving his patients relief from their issues for many years with his Healer CBD products that can be shipped to all 50 states. I use his acidic version of cannabidiol, or CBDA. It has everything plus a lot more of the compound, which Dr. Sulak and other leaders in this industry have found to be more potent, thereby using less, which ends up making a big difference to your wallet, but it also adds many benefits to your body. Start lifting your quality of life with Healer CBD products today, and check out that sweet discount just waiting for you in the link below. Um, I began growing my own cannabis and I became a grower and a caregiver for patients and began understanding that not all strain is equal for pain or sleep or anxiety or whatever the need might be. So that kind of led to me consulting as a nurse, educating patients to help them optimize their therapeutic outcomes of cannabis therapy through a really well-informed approach. We're screening the pharmaceuticals. We're trying to target their specific needs with an appropriate profile um, of cannabis product, for example. And, and I had three nurses that I hired and trained that had different specialties that were also consulting in my business. And we learned very quickly that it's not just about the strain, it's also about the extraction process. And mm -hmm. it's about uh, you know helping patients find optimal therapeutic quality cannabis, which only constitutes about five to 10% of what's available in the market and even harder to find in a dispensary. Sure uh, they is. just and so we came up with an acronym to describe the criteria that, by the way, is fully supported by research. So it's called the flow criteria. And flow. Well, I've heard of this. Have you, my nurse? Yes. Go ahead. So go funny. ahead. My nurses Yay. and I created this, and if it weren't for Nurse Jen, who was working with me at the time. I would have named it the wolf criteria. <laughs> so really? Thank you, Jen. <laughs> thank you, Jen. <laughs> but, um, but yes, the flow criteria, it stands for flower derived. And this was the reference that we don't want cannabis that's coming from biomass, raw material, right? The flower is the most prolific source of all of the good compounds that you want to treat for medicine. Right. You want it lab tested for exactly the reason you just mentioned yep. to ensure potency and purity, understand how much to take, what's appropriate, uh, you know, without lab testing, it's really a toss up. You know, you don't know the terpene profile. You don't know if it's going to be more sedative or more stimulating. You don't know if, if it's an appropriate formulation for targeting your, your goals, right. As a patient. So lab testing, very important. O is for organic, no brainer. We want it clean. And yep. W is for whole plant spectrum, meaning through that extraction process, the supplier is preserving the original profile of flour the best that they can. And it's not always perfect. There's going to be some loss due to heat or, you know, different factors, but they're doing their best to retain as many of those 500 compounds in the flour as possible. And the end product ends up being hundreds of compounds versus a CO2 product, which is a dozen or maybe a couple of dozen compounds or an isolate, which is one compound or a distillate, which is, just as dismal, you know, really. And part of what we started to teach patients is if it looks like water or just like your olive oil, it's not optimal. You want it to have some color because cannabis contains bioflavonoids, which are the colors of it. It contains chlorophyll, which is a dark green. And if you're stripping those things away, you're also stripping away the medical benefit. Part of the medicine, right. You are because there's synergy there. And what the research reflects on this topic, it was a meta-analysis that compared uh, CBD isolate outcomes versus whole plant study outcomes specifically for epilepsy. So it went through dozens of research outcomes from all these studies and just said, oh, these people were using isolate. This is what they experienced. These people were using whole plant. This is what they experienced. Compiled all the data 
And what they found was that whole plant was just as effective as isolate at around 30% of the dose. So when you consider that cannabis is charged by the milligram, that's cost savings for your patients it's so with real. fewer side effects. So they're going to not have to be grappling with side effects on top of what they're dealing with already with whole plant. And they also found in a separate study that the isolate exerts a bell curve response in the body. So it really narrows the therapeutic dose range for a patient, meaning that when you start on an isolate, you're going to peak in efficacy. And as you increase the dose, it actually drops off and stops working at more intensive dosing. So you consider patients with autoimmune, patients with cancer, patients with intense pain needs, um, retired athletes that need big milligrams for efficacy. Mm. If they're using an isolate, they could be on the opposite side of that bell curve and literally be getting little to no benefit from paying a lot of money for that product. Right. So oh. ethically, as a nurse, it was a no-brainer. It's like, we need to teach the flow criteria. That article can be found at CannabisNurseApproved.com, which also provides an open-source listing of several producers that meet the flow criteria. And free and nurse I'll guidance put, to boot. So <laughs> I'll, I'll put links in the, in the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, that would be awesome. Wow. Yep. So that was part of my journey was realizing that not all formulations in the cannabis world are created equal. And that really resonates with the training I've done since then as an herbalist. I'm a board certified master herbalist now. And in the herbal How many world, years did that take? Um, it took me about a year and a half. Get that I'm really surprised about that, but that's mm -hmm. a, that's wonderful incentive for me. I've got to yeah. say, yeah. especially yeah. at this age, I'm nearly 70 and it's oh, like, wow. you know, yeah. Oh God, don't make me go back to school again, but I can't stop learning about cannabis. Yeah. And that's why I love this, this tribe on LinkedIn so much because they're, you know, leading cannabinoidologists just spewing mm -hmm. all their discoveries and stuff online. Ooh, you'll have um, to add me. What, what group is that? I just did. It's oh, just did this tribe, it? you know, I, I just did just before we got on, on the phone. And oh, so, okay. I'll go look for um, it. um, are you familiar with Dr. Dustin Sulak? Of course. Of course. <laughs> and so I was, you know, healer trained and love him dearly and use his products and, and advocate them and Mary's medicinals and trusted Cana nurse, you know, Megan Bing. Oh yeah. She's fantastic <laughs> i i mentor i've been mentoring megan for about almost two years now um, oh god love you she and her, is I, so amazing i also do her pediatric consults through trusted cannon nurse for her does she make you go get on a pole with her though no i haven't done that yet <laughs> <laughs> but we she's in southern california i'm in oregon so we haven't actually right. ever met in person or maybe she would like that know. girl she is she she is a marvel girl and on fire such a whiz <laughs> yes such a whiz at, in cannabinoidology mm -hmm. and uh so i love talking about her i yes. i advocate her products everywhere and la 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 although i'm not affiliated with her i am with dr S uh Sulex healer product but there are a lot of excellent products out there we just have to teach how to vet them Mm -hmm. and how to use them, how to become our own alchemists mm -hmm. and uh, not to be afraid of discovery. You know, uh, if you learn how to do uh, cannabis properly, safely, effectively, you know, titrating in tiny subtherapeutical amounts to figure out your sweet <laughs> spot, all of that. But yeah. um, there is so much in discovery happening behind the scenes that uh, I kind of find myself uh, trying to put my hands around all the information. And it's just, you know, an armload to try to consume for somebody new to cannabis. And that's where I, I'm trying to help elders understand mm -hmm. uh, at this point. I don't, can't, can't speak to the medical professionals about it on their terms. I'm not in that realm yeah. but um but i hang out with them and i've learned so much and it's so nice to be able to lead people to your doorstep it's so nice to know that you and i know the same 
cannabinoidologists yes. and doctors yes. of the world who are really making a difference in cannabis discovery. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And Dr. Sulak's products do meet the criteria. So that is an excellent line. I don't think they're listed on the we just have it connected to see if that's even of interest to them. Um, it does bring them oh. free nurse guidance and a little bit of visibility. And then we do the flow education on the separate site. So it's not, it kind of, yeah. separating from the product sales site helps them be less susceptible to the FDA saying you're making medical claims because the education is separate. So those uh, are yes. some of the reasons we did this through Cannabis Nurse Approved. And the nurse also meet the flow criteria and she is cannabis nurse approved and you'll see the the logo on her products this logo i love that um, i just love that go nurses go yeah yeah Ooh, education it's is the grassroots from the nurses and the mothers and the patients all of this you know it's the people rising well yeah and, and getting into education just kind of occurs naturally when you get into the cannabis industry and you, you realize what a deficit there is in knowledge those experiences mentored with Eloise Thiessen, nurse practitioner, who's now working at Stanford, implementing Ryan's Law and helping cannabis patients and also educating the staff at Stanford on cannabis. So I had wow. some really great influences. Very, I started working with Eloise in 2015. So really wow. saw the benefit of that mentorship and took that knowledge in 2019. The Oregon State Board of Nursing here actually placed a gag order on nurses' education of cannabis patients. And shut down my business. God, can you for believe that? Children. Yeah. Uh, the the executive director at the time was quote unquote notoriously anti marijuana, which was the reason I was given from Oregon Nurses Association on why that happened. Because um, oh. I I do legislative advocacy, so I, I'm like, why? What's going on here? Like, oh, and they help yeah. explain this to me. And she's like, oh, it's just the ED. She's notoriously anti marijuana. She's from Texas. She doesn't get it. You know, and she even said, just wait till she retires and then you'll get somewhere with them. <laughs> well, I didn't wait until she retired. Um, my attorney and I got that overturned in 2021. But in the wow. interim, I pivoted and I had started building accredited content to educate nurses on the endocannabinoid system and cannabinoid science in 2018. So mm -hmm. I just pivoted and started focusing more on educating medical professionals. And I have accredited content with Cannabis Nurses Network and through the Oregon Hosted Nurses Association. That led to me becoming a college professor in 2020, where I'm teaching cannabinoid science for integrative and functional medicine students at John Patrick University. And I've created a couple <laughs> of Department of Education approved, fully accredited courses. Anybody can take my classes and get college credits for them. So it's very, very legitimate, which is amazing. Your family must be so proud of you. <laughs> Look at you go. Look at you go. Changing the world, changing people's minds and hearts. I laugh because my family actually disowned me over cannabis a decade ago. Oh, so did my <laughs> husband. He was a teetotaler, that old They're lost. that old guy. They're oh. lost. And you know, I, I really in retrospect, that was not the only issue. There was a lot of lifelong dysfunction happening. Mm -hmm. Um that was just kind of the final straw. And my dad was a minister turned prison guard. So had zero wiggle room in that oh, paradigm for cannabis wow. as medicine. I was immediately, my mom, who was a nurse, Shun. looked at my medical records and saw cannabis on my trauma list. I wasn't rubbing in their face or doing any of that kind of stuff. I was very respectful about it. Uh, but she found it and I explained it and showed her the research and showed her my lupus lab and said, please don't tell dad. And that was like the first thing she did was go over and guess what I just found <gasps> out. So, oh, yeah. Honey. Uh, and you know what? In retrospect, if that had not happened, I would not be doing what I'm doing today, which is freely following this calling that I yes. have to serve yes. those yes. in need in the cannabis industry. Yes. I would be having yes. them chirping in my ear every day, you know, telling what they told my whole family, who mostly wrote me off too, that I'm a drug dealer <laughs> and a dra drug oh. addict and God forbid I'm growing cannabis <laughs> legally. You know, it, it, it just... Yeah, it, I, that had to happen for me to, to follow this path. And I don't regret it. Like I said, they're well, lost. <laughs> what, uh, what an amazing story. Mm -hmm. And I am so glad that we get you because you are so valuable to us in, in the cannabis industry. 
for doing exactly what you're doing that has to be done. We've got to convince the doctors. We've got to you know, convince the other medical professionals who've been conditioned against this all their lives. Yes. And we've got to continue with discovery and, and help patients understand it so that they too can use it effectively and safely. So my whole soapbox has always been about uh, you know, contamination and, and COAs and all that stuff. But what you're doing, I'm, I'm amazed. God, you've got energy like crazy girl to be on such a political horse as well. And then teaching and this professor, wow, professorship and mm -hmm. all of that. Right. You're a pretty impressive woman, honey, and thank you so much for your service to all of us. Oh, thank you. And thank you as well for all you do. And, and you know, I love connecting with other kindreds who are just passionate, mm -hmm. just following the needs in an ethical way and really with an intent to serve. And mm -hmm. not, you know, so often we see investors or people who know nothing about cannabis coming into this industry, just seeing dollar signs and so... Mm -hmm. I think if that is allowed to proliferate, we're going to end up in the same exact situation we are with our medical system that is so broken because it's broken because it became profit driven in the eighties. That's why it's so broken today. So well, I feel like we certainly have certainly the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Why is, is it even, is anybody even trying to repair it? No, because they're benefiting too much from being broken. Yeah. They can, yeah. they can money grab and that's all they, that's all the people at the top of the healthcare industries and the insurance industries, they're all linked in with politics now as well. And it's all, it's all follow the money. I mean, look at pharmaceutical companies, look at the opioid crisis they created for money, which it's is now perfect. killing patients every 18 minutes. But God forbid we allow them to use cannabis with an unsurpassed cannabis. safety profile because right. it might make them do something evil, you know, where it'll make you a bad person. Like they're just so uninformed and, and so propagandized. Right. Um, it, and it's unfortunate seeing it in themselves or seeing it in a family member. And in my case, I was actually labeled fully and, com and permanently disabled in 2013. Oh my. And I, I spent two to three years very sick, some of that time bed bound. And so now that I'm functional again, that's part of it is I have a hard time saying no to anything if it's going to help patients. That's so <laughs> busy. It really just reflects how profound cannabis patients' needs really are in yeah. this country. It, and that we yeah. are not greatly or ethically. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I do a lot of lecturing on medical ethics and how we're not following them in the cannabis industry. Well, we're really oh. in the medical industry anymore. So. I hope other people are doing American ethics because they're horrible too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an ethical breach across the board, but when we're talking mm -hmm. ethics, we are referring to the internet, which was breached during world war II through the Nazi Germany experiments on humans that were unethical and the medical professionals, the doctors and nurses that perpetrated those orders they breach the Nuremberg Code. They breach our medical ethics of patient autonomy or agency. They have the right to say what is done to their body. Of informed mm -hmm. consent, they have the right to be fully informed on what options might be their best choice, right? So they breach those ethics. And in the Nuremberg trials that followed the end of World War II, the medical professionals who justified killing and torturing people basically for their government they justified it with that they just wanted to keep their job their punishment right. was the pain. they hung They're following orders they hung by ropes around their necks for it so Ugh. when we're talking medical ethics the ramifications of breaching them are substantial we are the final backstop for patient impact and we bear the wow. responsibility of what happens to our patients. For example, mm -hmm. when I, I worked um, acute care, I worked in a hospital when I first graduated nursing school for several years. Mm -hmm. I was neurology, orthopedics, post-surge, mm -hmm. and critical care cardiac. And as a nurse, if I even had to go downstairs to get food in the cafeteria, 
Yeah. I had to make sure my pager was handed to the nurse and knew what was happening with my group of patients. So, like, we are fully responsible when patients in our care. And we can be charged and, and if we're appropriate in following our ethics. Not to mention wow. <laughs> passively hung. <laughs> and there's a yeah, right? documentary about I don't it's I'm just trying to with people. Um with everything happening right now, you know, with the politics in Israel and what's happening there. But uh, there's a beautiful documentary. It's on YouTube. It's called The Killing Nurses of the Third Reich Carrying Carrying Corrupted, I believe, is part of the name too. It's an hour long documentary and it's wow. they're interviewing survivors of the Holocaust who were subject to some of these experiments. Mm. And explaining things like when one of the groups that was targeted wasn't even Jews. It was anybody that had special needs. Anybody that was disabled was also targeted. I'm a mom of an autism daughter, by the Mm. way. So this woman was explaining how the nurses were lovingly holding these babies that had disabilities of some sort. Down syndrome, I think, was common. And Uh injecting them with poison to kill them while lovingly holding them. And as a oh nurse God. and a special needs mom, that documentary hit me so hard. Oh, God, I bet. Um, and made me that much more determined to bring forward this issue around medical ethics in the cannabis industry. So Wow. Uh, I, things find me for a reason. It's, it's amazing. It really is. Um, but, well, you, know. you have the energy for it, too. I'm so glad because it's huge, honey. Mm-hmm. It's the passion. The passion energizes me. Yeah. And, and cannabis yeah. has not only helped me. It's helped my husband enormously. He fell off a roof. I, it's been almost oh, a year Lord. ago. And several breaks. He was non-weight bearing, unable to walk for three months. Um, oh, my gosh. Um, and he came home from the hospital on a bunch of opioids, horrible, horrible medications, but pharmaceutical interaction combined mm. cannabis with what they're giving him because they're clueless about how it might interact and cannabis should have their pharmaceutical screened. But most people are totally clueless on that fact. But he came to the hospital and with inhaled THC, which is safe with just about any pharmaceutical, he was able to wean off the opioids within about two weeks which the doctor was blown away. Um, my daughter has also wow. benefited greatly. My daughter with autism. She had a puberty crisis in 2014. And I knew enough then to compare cannabis with the pharmaceutical mental health options and wow. see that cannabis with unsurpassed safety profile and beneficial effects versus the horrific list of side effects. Uh, right. the, the FDA approved for our Abilify and Risperdone, which yeah. have a horrible side, oh. not to mention awful use of anxiolytics, even anti epileptic like seizure medications. Oh my goodness. Very dating, very negatively impactful on quality of life, not to mention uh, possible life threatening side effects like suicide, suicidal ideation, Stephen Johnson syndrome, ne- neurologic malignant syndrome, like horrific risks of side effects versus cannabis, which is perfectly safe. And cannabis. Her situation, her behaviors were such that she was beating everybody up. She was injuring herself. She destroyed mm. my house. We had holes in her walls, holes through doors, broken windows. Oh, poor thing. Aired her out of home placement for safety reasons. Oh. And I wrote her in 27 her of medical marijuana magazine, which sold nationwide in Barnes and Noble. So that was like my coming out of the cannabis closet moment as a nurse. Like, okay, I'm wow. going to declare this and I'm going to walk through this gray area and, and, you know, if I feel like I'm doing the right thing, the kind of disappears to that experience. Um, wow. I think I sent you the link to it. We can link that too. But it, the cover story is the best part of that whole cover. And what was the name of the magazine? Everything Medical Marijuana Magazine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, let's find that link and, and yeah. uh, put it in the show notes. Please send it yeah, to me or I'll, I, I'll look it up too. Yeah. I it's will. online somewhere, right? It, it is. It's online. It's on Integrated Holistic Care under the News tab. It's integratedholisticcare.com uh, okay. under the news. And the cover, if you look at it, it's me standing with a clipboard in you know, a, a nursing lab coat with a stethoscope around my neck yeah. with a cannabis plant right next to me. Nice. And that plant was from my grow. Uh-huh. I smuggled it into an indoor mall in the center <laughs> of Medford, Oregon. <laughs> a- 
a friend of mine was the photographer and he owned a studio in this indoor mall. Oh, and that's great. But he was like, okay, we got to sneak it in. So it was like, he met me in the parking lot and we brought it through <laughs> the, util- the utility hallway and entered the back door of his lock studio, took a picture of him. <laughs> it was like, you could, you could almost hear the Mission, Mission Impossible music. Dun, dun, yeah, dun, really? Dun, right? Did great. you put a brown bag it over great. it? <laughs> it was in a box. That's great. Poor plant. It's like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> That's no, no. too funny. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's, but but the but that's the way we felt because the laws were so restrictive of a plant. Yeah. And in 1937, which made it inaccessible to most, and that's when the pharmaceuticals really emerged and came forward and started donating to all of the universities to use their pharma-led curricula in place uh, of the cannabis that nobody could afford anymore anyway. Yeah. That was part of how that all happened. So yeah. Wow. Uh, ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and then nowadays, my most recent contract I just signed was with Canny Nurse, which is a nurse education, um, cannabis focused nurse education organization. Beautiful. And they are launching, I think it's a fairly unique offering. I haven't, I've been doing a lot of clinical education of nurses through mentorship, uh-huh. like with Megan Bang, for example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the first time we're bringing it together as a program to offer nurses and focus not just on the theory, but on the clinical application of cannabis, how to assess a patient, how to determine what, what products or what profiles might best meet their needs, how mm-hmm. to approach it in, you know, how to screen pharmaceuticals for interactions and determine right. what is best spacing to avoid any, any as effects. Right. Um, I mean, these are all these these are not things that that medical professionals learn by just understanding the theory of cannabis and the endocannabinoid right. system. It's another step, and and there's this gap where you, it's really helpful to have a mentor, have somebody teaching you the critical thinking of how to apply cannabis as medicine. I feel like that's really the next frontier in medical professional cannabis education. There's so much strategy involved mm-hmm. in cannabis medication because mm-hmm. of the terpene profiles, because of the, you know, percentages of uh, the uh, cannabinoids, because of all of that. Correct. And, so, and, and, and then you're not going to get the same plant twice ever. Right, right. And so there's something there, too. So in... <laughs> I. I connected with whole plant suppliers over the years since I discovered the difference. And one of those was Jarrett Keller at the time. And I think he, his company is still open, the lighthearted farmer. He okay. makes food grade organic ethanol extractions, mm-hmm. full extract cannabis oil is what they call it to differentiate from RSO, which is made mm-hmm. with solvents that we don't normally want to necessarily want to promote anymore using um, right. because they're toxic and RSO. Like name Rick, and all that. Yes. Rick Simpson. I believe his intent was good. I, I love that he was such a trailblazer in the cannabis and cancer community. Right. But as we know better, but then we came do better. science, right? As, you know. as we know better, we do better. And we know now that, especially <laughs> when it's patients at home making their right. own oil, right? We and not lab testing to make sure everything's purged. We definitely want to encourage use of food grade and organic ethanol solvents, not acetone, naphtha, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you know, if jewels of those, they could potentially harm a patient. And that could have been part of what was your experience too. Um, so that's where we call it full extract cannabis oil. Yep. Um, so basically, Jarek, he, make, he makes that and he was making tinctures and just like offering five strains or something, some indica, some sativa, something in between. Uh-huh. And, and Based on plants that I had grown, I found one that I absolutely loved for pain. And that's my primary issue is chronic pain. And so profiled it and said, hey, Jarek, can you make a tincture that looks like this? Sure Mm. enough, he could. So I started sending patients to him and saying, please make them the pain blend. Please make them, you know, and then we learned like a good blend for autism calming. Okay, please send them the autism. Is there really? And so through this process, we came up with several really great recipes that were tried and true with our patients yep. that were effective for targeted use. And he confronted me in 2020 and said, hey, why don't we create a label 
that's targeted use products to make it easier for patients and practitioners to figure out what to recommend that might be the most benefit for that patient. And so we came up with Unity formulas. Now, as a nurse, I never benefited from sales of a product. Um, and I was very hesitant for that reason. Like I can't possibly like yeah. take the recipes, whatever. I don't want to benefit from the sales. Yeah. So he, one C3 called autism safe haven that is committed to creating a cannabis inclusive healthcare model that will accommodate autism care homes. And the nice thing is it will reach beyond that. Once we mm. create it, autism is kind of the hardest group yeah. to accommodate because they were, they may require a of administration, which is really where it gets sticky in the legislation right. here. But he came up with the idea, well, instead of us paying you your equity portion of this company that you're contributing recipes to, how about if we just donate to your nonprofit every quarter? And so that's what we do. So these are products with purpose too. So I love Unity Formulas. They also have free nurse guidance um, and they have an affiliate program that includes mentorship with me for practitioners to help them better utilize the line and understand all of the science. So it's really an outsource. So if a practitioner thinks their patient might benefit, but they don't want to talk about it or learn it or God forbid be faced with a question they can't answer, we're right. their outsource. Refer them to us. We'll take care of the rest. Free nurse guidance. We can help them pick a product, help them get, you know, help them along their way. Um, but if a practitioner wants to learn, they become an affiliate and then I can help them learn. Um, so that is in, in the products themselves, we use them in our home. There's a neurological line that's great. It has myrcene as a primary enhancement to, so he takes the, the whole plant base and will amend it just such that it's better for targeting a specific use. And it's all evidence-based supported by research. At, you know, we can go through the different ingredients and say, this is why we say it might be beneficial for anxiety because it's CBD, which is anxiolytic with myrcene, which helps it cross the blood brain barrier and linalol, which has anxiolytic properties in its own right. So it's really in a, perp in, in a sedative indica CBD base, right? So um, yeah, I just spoke with somebody who is producing a dissolvable strip mm. with cannabinoids on it. And he claims it's giving him like 80% bioavailability instead of the you know maybe 30 percent we get from um ingesting it yeah is it 30 maybe 30 percent am i right about that i'm not quite sure if I'm yeah right about that percentage, i don't but... i don't think they've tested it with whole plants and i suspect it's higher with whole plant than it would be with an isolate um although the isolates can be nanodized or encapsulized in a fat which they call liposomal that increases right. the bioavailability. But I have concerns about that. It was actually a liposomal formulation that interacted with the meloxicum patient. Um, See, that there you are. I mentioned earlier. Right. And so enhanced bioavailability seems to translate to enhanced interaction with pharmaceuticals because that patient had been on a different CBD prior and had done fine. It was when she switched oh. to a liposomal that three days later she died. So it, you know, mm. and really as an herbalist too, it's readily accepted that the whole plant versions of herbs are superior to any isolate derivatives or, you know, or synthetics or semi, semi synthetics. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, that, you know, anytime, <clears throat> anytime I hear <laughs> increased bioavailability, I know it's a human that with some amount of ego has determined that they can improve upon the perfection of nature and in a plant around a plant that we don't yet fully understand. Right? right. So to think that we can improve on something that we're still learning new things about, what is it? There's a dozen new studies emerging in cannabis science every week. And we think we can <laughs> improve on something that. that we're still learning yeah, right? about, <laughs> yeah, like, right. but, you know, it, it's a lot of logic and it's a lot of kind of, and I understand really the drive to create these synthetics, semi-synthetics, increased bioavailability, you know, is to mm. either come up with a process or a product that can be patented so they can monopolize on the profits. So it's not necessarily in the best interest of patients. Yeah. Right. Right. So and those are my for, issues. For that. That. Not... Yeah, no, I, I appreciate <laughs> seeing it from your eyes because I hadn't considered that yet. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, so that's why I like hanging out with you guys. You're yeah, so good at this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, and I'm a deep diver. I love to, I'm kind of an investigator type. So I love to, I see something that, that brings up a question and I go and search for the answer and I don't find it until I hit rock bottom with that subject. Like I will dig um, all the way to the depths of it to try to figure it out. So it's And as patients, we're not taught to do that. No. We're taught to listen to the doctor, do what the doctor says, take the doctor's dose, mm. his prescription, and be consistent with taking it until you're told not to. And we're yeah. never told not to. Yeah, exactly. So it's it really stems from a lot of experience, a lot of research, um, and, and just I a determination. Say Sure. Jana, as a patient, I'm on your unityformulas.com site right now. Uh-huh. Okay. And and after moving from a medical state up here to a recreational state, it's like, oh holy shit, I can't I, I can't go into dispensaries anymore because they're just candy stores. Mm-hmm. What I'm trying to tell you is that I so appreciate the medicine on your site looks like it's in a medicinal um package. Yes. You know, it, and and that's what I'm after. I'm after somebody who understands that I'm looking for medicine for relief. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking for, you know, uh, wild colored mylar packaging that, you know, all that stuff and, and the highest percentage of cannabis or THC that they can muster. Right. And that seems to be um, all that they can sell up here. Plus, they'll open up a big jar of raw flour and stick it under your nose for you to smell. Yeah, and I'm just yeah. horrified by that behavior. You know, <laughs> that's and, not and, a good way to pick your product. I'm sorry. I mean, I I know no. there's some aromatherapy aspects maybe involved there, but the best it, way to choose a product is to know the entire profile, cannabinoid and tripping, understand the research, understand the patient outcomes, and what seems to be most beneficial. For that patient's specific situation, not to mention yeah. screening pharmaceuticals, which bud tenders are not qualified to do. At this all. really should be a medical assessment process. It really should be. And I'm ashamed mm-hmm. of the legislators who have usurped the doctor's little black bag uh-huh. for their own purpose. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really am. Um, well, yeah, this it, is a nice site, and I appreciate um, going through it. There's not too many products to overwhelm me like there are at the dispensaries up here i've never gone into a dispensary up here that i came out with what i intended to buy yeah so uh you know because i get upsold everything yeah that's that's the thing the bud tenders are salespeople, and i actually have a story from a michigan dispensary patient who i served i think it was like in 2018 this woman was in her 80s um, and her age was such that I was like, well, you might have had cannabis as a baby. <laughs> like it was around, yeah. it was still available when you were born. But, um, but she had gone into a dispensary. First time cannabis user had chronic pain, whole long list of polypharmacy. And the tender in this elderly woman recommended she purchase a 300 milligram THC chocolate candy bar. Oh my And that she eat half of it at a time. No. She was high for days. Uh, oh my God. She, she was taking metoprolol, which does not very, very well. So it was a stroke of luck that she didn't end up having heart arrhythmias and end up in the ER thinking she was no having kidding. a heart attack. Like, it's really these patients. And, and this woman, in telling me her experience, said that she had gone to a quote-unquote medical center. So she really oh. thought she was getting medical advice from the butt oh. tender. Oh, oh God. It's horrific. It's horrific. Um. So, yeah, this is part of why we created Unity Formula. It's part of why we have free nurse guidance. Anybody can go and schedule a free 15-minute call with a nurse, ask questions, receive answers, and be guided to which product is a good place to start. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. the line, like you said, is sort of limited. It's very targeted. There's a a mind line of products, which are all neurological targeted. So anything happening in the brain, mental health, brain cancer, epilepsy, autism, really good answers for those ADD, ADHD, depression, we have everything from very stimulating to very sedating on that, sedative on that line. And we have the immune system or body line, which has pain products and immune system products. Um, the immune and the shield combined ha- have worked so well that three and a half of the four viruses that have tried to catch me this season have failed miserably. And I say oh, half because the fourth time my husband and daughter both got sick 
Mm -hmm. and I felt fine. And then all of a sudden I had a, a congested cough that lasted about a week. And I'm like, I don't know. Know where that came oh, from. but you had no easy. other symptoms. No other yeah. symptoms. <laughs> wow. So, those and so CBDA, CBGA, and based on research out of the university, university supported that it blocks viral replication of COVID nineteen. The immune uh, blend, yeah. the immune blend is CBD and CBG, which are both very antimicrobial. They kill bacteria like crazy. Uh, there's research supporting CBD kills MRSA, for example. No, I was just going to say that. Uh -huh. Yes. And then the terpene profile is also really vital. The terpenes provide anti-protozoal and antiviral benefits. So is that, that beta caryophylline? Uh, beta caryophylline is definitely in there, but there were some other really specific ones mm -hmm. um, that provide the antiprotozoal and antiviral per the research. Um, so that was our answer to COVID because they're treating COVID wow. with Plaquenil, which is antiprotozoal and, you mm. know, other antivirals. So it's, um, and then what else is on there? The intensive line, um, that is really formulated with increased potency for patients with cancer or other intensive need conditions. And the nice thing is, you know, Jarek has, has put this line out in a really straightforward manner. It's tinctures, which are medical quality. And that's where I always tell patients to start because you can literally count the number of drops and know how many milligrams you're taking. Yep. Um, increase very slowly, very easily. Um, he also has topicals, which are mixed with some different herbals and the concentrates as well. So these are all medical grade products. And if a patient tries, say, like the anxiety blend, and it's, you know, there's a lot of individual variation in response. So don't say this formulation will work for 100% of people that try it. Right. And if somebody tries the anxiety formula and it's not a fit, we assess, we work with them, and Jarek will custom blend and bend over backwards to find something that will work. And wow. then that's their blend that they can call and get consistently anytime. Kind of like a compound pharmacist. Exactly. Wow. It's, it's really what I wish had been in existence when I started off consulting with patients in 2015. Because at that time, it was THC or THCA, and you were lucky to get in the Carisativa classification. Wow. Well, Jana Champagne, you are a marvel of cannabis energy, and we so appreciate <laughs> your work and contribution to not only our society, but the rest of the world, too. I mean, you know, it just goes out from what you teach, and thank goodness for you, honey. We so appreciate what you've done already and i know that you're just gonna, you're a young woman you're just going to keep oh, going no. and going and no, going no no i'm a grand <laughs> you're a grandmother well I'm there's a young grandma. grandmothers <laughs> well yeah i, I raised i hope my one biological is my daughter with autism and um, my daughter had a baby a year ago december oh i'll be 50 this year and i'm a grandma i'm nana jana so that is precious yeah, well, it's um, it's nice. I fully to... embraced this phase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. Came up to Michigan and now I get to live with my grandkids and they're just oh. precious and wonderful. Nine and 10 years old and 18 and oh. one who's just 20 and in the Navy already. So, mm. um, yeah, it's great. It's great. Well, darling, thank yeah. you so much for your time today. I'm going to put all these links up on, on the show notes so that our audience will be able to see them readily and have them available. And uh, if there's anything else that you'd like to tell us, maybe specifically how to get in touch with you. Sure. There's a couple of ways. And, and what I'll do, honey, too, is, is send you my coupon code. Oh, thank formula. you. So you're, it's twenty percent off, and you're welcome to share that with your with your listeners as well. I most certainly There's, will. And I'll send you the link to my website where I'm offering patient consultations. That's integratedholisticcare.com. And there's a big link there. Um, I'm basically consulting right now as a fundraiser for my nonprofit. So the payment towards the consultation donates directly to the nonprofit and the patient receives a tax deductible donation wow. uh, letter okay. from me at the end of the year. So it's, it's a nice little perk. And then, and if you really are interested in seeing, you know, more of my work and my duties and 
I think we pretty much covered everything today, but there might be some things. <laughs> I do a lot. I People ask me what I do, and it's like, that's a trick question. <laughs> what exactly do you want to know? Yeah, I need, a... You need to be more specific. It's right, wonderful. Right. You wear right. a lot and of so, hats, darling. Yeah, and so if you want to just kind of see more about our story, links to my interviews, links to my articles. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also a writer for American Journal of Endocannabinoid Medicine. I think that's something I missed. American um, Journal of Endocannabinoid Medicine. Correct. We I'm they call already, it ADM. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. already in their newsletter. Um, Aren't they amazing? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I'll have another link to that, too, as well. Uh, yeah. You, do you accept affiliate partnerships by any chance? I'm just curious. Um, sh yeah, on, on a limited basis. I'm, I'm pretty pretty um discriminating about who i will partner with or work with i want to make sure that i'm that glad we're on to hear the it. same level as kindreds i'm glad to uh, hear it's it. learned from experience yeah um so yeah definitely if if there's any of that people are welcome to reach, reach out and the the easiest way to kind of see the bigger picture with me is to go to my media kit website which is janachampagne.com it's j-a-n-n-a -N -N -A, and then champagne spelled like the drink um and did you hear uba blushing's I adore uh, him podcast. Yeah. Has age of podcast. Not uh, recording. No, I haven't so, heard that one. Yeah. They wrote up an article on him, but the articles are all behind a paywall. I get a lot of people saying, I can't read it. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to pay $200 a year or whatever it is. Right. Um, he's doing algorithms for clinicians through his can of keys, uh, website, which is basically a research database. It makes researching cannabis such a snap. Is he and, still uh, in San Francisco? He's in Berkeley, I think. So pretty close. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. And yep. so he's adding algorithms to help clinicians kind of figure out those questions you ask patients to get to what might be optimal. And he's I'm gonna be helping him with the autism algorithm. Autism you algorithm. lucky girl. So. He's the most he's one of the most charming men on the planet. He's oh, just he's amazing. wonderful. Yeah. He's amazing. And his yeah. uh, knowledge is just astounding. Mm -hmm. So And he and his I'm, wife are so cute. Oh, oh they're darling. Oh. No, I met them in person, but oh, yeah, so cute. Too. So yeah. wonderful. Yeah, she's so sweet. All so, right. Yeah. Well, thank you, dear. Thank you for all of this. And uh, boy, you've just given us so much to think about. And I do appreciate seeing the uh, cannabis world through your eyes. It makes such a difference to have a, a larger periphery of vision, you know, yeah. than what we were just conditioned with. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. This has been such a great visit today. I really appreciate you inviting me to come in and talk with you. My pleasure. So thank you. All righty. Well, thank you. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, honey. All have right. Take care. Day. Bye -bye. You too. Thanks. Keep it light. You've been listening to another Cannabivarum podcast, the Cannabis Truth Podcast, with 21st century cannabis shaman Honey Smith Walls, that's me, about the importance of using verifiably safe products, the process of getting a diagnosis from your family doctor and taking your records to a cannabis specialist can lead you to the correct cannabinoid therapy for those issues. Otherwise, you're just your own guinea pig looking for answers without any foundational knowledge or ability to determine the best choices or strategies. To find a qualified cannabis expert in your area, visit CannabisClinicians.org. It is a national society of cannabis experts, and you'll see that link down in my show notes. Unless otherwise proven by a reputable third-party lab test, please be advised that all street weed is contaminated. It may do grave harm to a patient with a delicate immune system who already has inflammatory issues like arthritis or IBS, fibromyalgia, or worse. Subscribe to the Cannabivarum podcast so you get automatically updated episodes and tell your friends and family to tune in for current cannabis information. Thank you so much for joining this worldwide conversation about the real value of cannabis. We'll see you next week. For now, I'm pretty sure the cows are calling. Yeah. <laughs>